Hey everybody and welcome to the Dr. Mom Show. This is Dr. D, mom of three, your host, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for listening or if you're watching the show, we appreciate you joining us. Today I have an amazing guest on again. She has been on before and she was so awesome and just people raves about her that she's on again to share another story, another trial that she has been through and she is still going through. Of course, again, here at the Dr. Mom Show, we love giving you medical information, but also sharing people's story, stories so we can empower you. And of course, remember this season, season two of the Dr. Mom Show is about to come to an end after today's show. We only have two episodes, one, two episodes left of season two. So if you've missed any of season two, definitely go back and check it out, especially with our guest here. She was recently on, so you can hear all about her experience with her heart attack. And this month we'll be talking about, like we mentioned in the title, the mysteries of multiple sclerosis. So definitely check out this season before it finishes up. So, you know, of course I can take a break, spend a little time with my family, regroup, you know, <laughs> everybody needs that, as you know, quote, unquote, me time. Again, just to remind you, the Dr. Mom Show is a medical informational resource. It does not take the place of your physician or your child's physician. So please seek your medical advice, diagnoses, and treatment plans from your physician or your child's physician. So here we go again. Uh, by <laughs> Popular demand, we have Ms. Joan Baumgarth back with Yay. us. Yay! It is so good to be back. It is so good to be back. Looking even more beautiful. Oh, if you sweet. guys listened to this show or watched it, as you know, last month, February, was our heart month, and Miss Joan had a heart attack at the end of last year, and she shared her story. So don't forget to check out that episode. She talks about her experience with that and how it has changed her life and her health. But today, we are focusing on multiple sclerosis because March is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. So we just wanted to bring you a little bit more information and awareness this month about it. And what way, what better way to do that than to bring somebody who has multiple sclerosis so they can talk about their experience. So again, if you missed the first show with her, I'm just going to give you a little snippet about her. So excited again, Ms. Joan is a wife of 16 years to 16 years to one husband now. And then she, <laughs> she keeps telling me that's a whole other podcast. So we'll have to hit all that at some other point. Um, she's a mother to two beautiful, beautiful children. And she has been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis for 10 years now, but that has not stopped her, neither the heart attack. She is nope. an ordained minister and one of the coaching queens of Coaching Queens 2020. So again, help me welcome Ms. Joan Baumgart. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back. I'm, I'm excited about the topic and I'm excited to talk and, and I'm looking forward. All right. Well, again, for those who missed you with the last show, Miss Joan, tell us just a little bit about yourself again. Okay. Um, I had, if you see the previous show on November 13th, I had a heart attack and um, a mild one, but I had an artery that was blocked and a stent put in. Um, I've been working on that. In fact, today I have a cardiologist appointment, a follow up. So, yay, heart. And, um, like you said, I'm a game minister. I'm an inspirational speaker. I enjoy talking and helping people in in their trials and tribulations of life. And I love that. And you know, I just appreciate you taking time out with everything you do of to come and to share your story. Because I always mention it's so important that. I feel God puts us through trials, not only for ourselves, but for us to help and impact other people. Yes, definitely. Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we live by faith, not by sight. That's right. That is right. Um, all right. So we're going to dive in right now. So today, again, we are talking about the mysteries of multiple sclerosis, also known as MS, if you guys hear us say that. 
So just to give you a little, you know, information about MS and background information, if you have not heard about it or if you're not, you know, in tune with what it's all about, but multiple sclerosis is a disease of the brain and spinal cord. So essentially a part of your nervous system. And it's thought to be an autoimmune disease, which means that the nervous system is attacking itself. So we don't really know what an underlying cause, they haven't found an underlying cause for it. But what happens is the covering of our nerves get attacked and mm -hmm. there's issues with communication between the nerves from the brain and the rest of our body. Because as you know, the, our nerves essentially is what communicates everything throughout our body. That's why if somebody has a spinal cord injury, it's just so devastating. But this isn't a physical injury. This has to do with the covering of the nervous system itself. So, Ms. Joan, yes. you tell us, what kind of symptoms did you start having 10 years ago? Or even, you know, let us know, like, when did you start having symptoms? And did you I see the started doctor having right after? symptoms about 30 years ago. Oh, wow. And I had, <laughs> I had numbness. This is how you need to pay attention, just like I said on the last show. Listen to your gut. But I had uh, numbness problems, and they did a spinal tap. And at the time I was going through a divorce, I felt fine, and I didn't do anything. Mm. I just moved on my merry way. And then 10 years ago, I guess I had an exacerbation, a relapse, um, per se. And um, it was trigeminal neuralgia. Am I saying that correctly? Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, I also had vertigo. So I was crawling to the bathroom and this was for about a week. Oh, wow. And I went to the doctor and my family practitioner, my PCP or whatever you um, call it, PCP, is that correct? Yeah, your primary care physician. physician. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I went to him and he sent me to a neurologist and it went on to where I had four scars on my brain. My spinal tap came back clear, but I had four scars on my brain and they're strategically placed to where it is typical for an MS person to have those scars. So they put me on uh, DMT, disease modifying treatment, and um, it was injections that I had to put in my legs or stomach and my husband helped me with my arms and, and stuff like that. And uh, then it went on to oral medication because they, they keep coming up with new medications. And that was a Baggio. And I liked it because it, it sounded like wine. <laughs> 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 and that was a new way for me to remember it. And then um, it came to where through the course of my medication, I now have 10 scars on my brain. Mm. Still nothing on my spine, but my cognitive skills, my memory is bad short-term memory especially mm -hmm. and i know that also comes with age but i do notice with with the ms that it's affected um fatigue i have to take it easy if i know i'm going to do something tomorrow then i know i have to take it really easy the day before and i know the day after it's going to be a little rough for me yeah. so um there are certain things that I've had to deal with, but now I am on a drug called Ocrevus and it's an infusion. And what it is is I go every six months and I have an injection. Uh, it's an infusion for six hours. And my husband likes doing that. He takes me to it since COVID. He can't go in, so he goes to the sporting goods stores and shops. <laughs> So he, he gets he all excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> he gets all excited about that. But that's where I am now. I just uh, had one in January. So July uh, will be my next, my next infusion. Okay. And, you know, some of the symptoms, uh, Ms. Joan talked about some of the symptoms, but, you know, again, everybody's not the same. People present differently, but some symptoms that you can present with include numbness, weakness, vision changes, mm -hmm. um, slurred speech, dizziness. Again, if you know, you're probably thinking like, what, this sounds like a stroke, but kind of backtrack a little. We talked about the nervous system, that it affects the nervous system. And of course, if someone has a stroke, it affects their brain, 
the nervous system. So that's why you have those symptoms that kind of overlap. And, right. you know, it's funny you mentioned that when you first had the numbness and things like that, that you ignored it. But it is important, Miss Joan, like she mentioned at her last um, her last show with me, she talked about, you know, hey, when you get that feeling that something's wrong, like get it checked out. You know, if deep inside, you know, something's you wrong. Know, think, deep inside, deep inside. <laughs> That's right. And I think as humans, we're all guilty. And we talked about this on the other show that as women and speaking of women, you know, March, this month that we're in is women's whoop, whoop, history month. So shout out to all our ladies out there. So ladies, we are talking to you. You know, we have to take care of ourselves because I know we're very particular about things and we feel that if we don't do it, it's not done properly. But if we're sick and not healthy and not strong, Who's going to do everything? Who's going to take care of your family? Who's going to get your job done? So remember right. to also take care of yourself. Um, and, you know, we are good at procrastinating all the time with that. Oh, you know, I kind of feel this either. Like how Ms. Joan talked about that, like twinge in her chest. Um, and then, you know, now yes. she's talking about that shortness of breath with the MS. Um, so it is important if you feel something different happening. And, you know, funny enough, a lot of times we see patients present when there's a stressful situation. So she talked about her stroke, uh, sorry, about her divorce, that she was going through her divorce. And a lot of times we see this, that if somebody yep. has this, and we see this with autoimmune diseases, that if somebody either is like pregnant or going through a stressful situation in their life, this autoimmune disease will show its, you know, it'll show its head. Um, and one way I've had people present to me is with exercise, because of course with exercise, it's good for your body, but so you're putting stress on your body because you're working that they'll start saying that, Hey, I used to be able to exercise for an hour. And now by the time I get to like 20, 30 minutes, I feel really weak or I get numbness and tingling, or they start getting, um, blurry vision. Um, blurry vision is really yeah. prominent when you're tired. Yes, yeah. very much so. So I've seen that our double vision and part of that, again, it goes back to the nerve. Then one of the nerves or some of the nerves that go through your eyes and innervate what we call, that's the word we use. We innervate, the nerves innervate your eyes, again, become affected because the covering, like I talked about with MS. of The, the myelin, is, is that affected. correct? The myelin? The myelin, uh-huh. Myelin, okay. Myelin, yep. Myelin sheath. That's the like fancy term is myelin okay, sheath. Okay, I want to be fancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're fancy here. That's right. That's what we're all about being fancy. Um, so the myelin sheath, that's the medical term of the neuron is what it's called. So essentially it's just the covering of the nerve is affected. And Ms. Joan kind of talked about her workup and, you know, they have different things that they can do for the workup, but probably two of the most common things she hit on is with the lumbar puncture or the spinal tap is where they take the fluid out, out of your spine. So they put a needle in there and draw some fluid out. And a lot of times they check for different cells. And if one cell is more, if they see something, it's consistent with multiple sclerosis, but She's a perfect example where it doesn't necessarily have to be abnormal. Right. Her, you know, her lumbar spinal tap was completely normal. But then her MRI, we see changes on the MRI that are consistent with MS. So those are two things. Again, there's some other tests. And just, you know, it's normally a neurologist. That's a nerve doctor that you see. If you know you have seen your primary care physician and they feel that something is going on, and some neurologists like sub sub specialize in multiple sclerosis, so they may just not yes. be a general um, neurologist. They may like all they do is see multiple sclerosis patients. And um, again, just to note, Doctor Miss um, Jones, she mentioned some medications. There's a lot of medications out there, so there's don't think that. There's a lot of them. Yeah, so don't think that you know. Hey, she mentioned this name, this one that sounds like a wine. I want to. Try yeah, I'm that. sorry. That was just, that was just easy for me it. to remember. <laughs> I love it. Hey, no, some of those medications are tricky to remember. Um, but uh, but just remember that every case is different because some every case some, is different. Yeah, if somebody has an exacerbation, some some um, physician will give the patient steroids. Um, there's also something called plasmapheresis, which is like an infusion that they use, um, and they circulate your your cells. 
um, with the plasma phoresis. Um, and then of course there's oral medications. And then like Ms. Joan talked about the infusions. Uh, so, so there's a lot of medications out there, a lot of options, but of course to each their own in the sense of exactly. how progress the multiple sclerosis is, what your body can tolerate. And, you know, obviously that's best decided by your doctor. I have relapse remit. Okay. And, and, and that is the, the calmer side. I always say I'm a healthy MSer. <laughs> so I, uh, I don't have that much stress in my life, but some of the symptoms that have come out have, you got to have a sense of humor. Yeah. You got to have a sense of humor. Um, I'll go into the symptoms when, when, when you want me to, but um, I, uh, sense of humor and faith is, is very, very, very important. Yeah. So let's talk about that. I mean, obviously, you know, you recently had the heart attack, but this you've been dealing with for years. How for has years. it changed your life? You know, how um, has it changed how you live, things you do? Well, the things I do, you know, it's funny. I can't do heel to toe anymore. I can't. And I don't know why that upsets me because I never had to do it. I yeah. never had to be stuck for a sobriety test or whatever, but I can't do it. <laughs> When I close my eyes, I lose my balance. Mm, yep. Um, I had a twitch one time mm. and we went out to eat and my arm would just go up like that. And we were at the Olive Garden. I'm sorry. We were at a restaurant and um, I threw my fork and it landed over in another person's table. And I went over there and I said, I just wanted to try what you were having. <laughs> Of course, we ended up, we had to buy a lot of meals. <laughs> there are certain things that uh, one time when you had the fear of falling, you grab on anything. And where I was yeah. working, a customer came up and I gave her a hug because I thought I was falling. And I'm so, I'm so glad you're shopping here. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just have to, you know, one time at, um, I thought I was falling and, and we were at a greasy spoon for breakfast and my hand went right into the gentleman's plate. I mean, yolk and stuff just went everywhere. And I'm like, don't eat that. And he said, why? And I said, because my hand's in it. <laughs> yeah. And Jean Larry went up and started paying the check. You know? oh, I mean, so, but there are other things that I have. Like I said, you got to plan when, when things happen. I can't very seldom do. I do things to spur of the moment. Yeah. You know, it just mornings are good for me. Um, I got in a pattern to where I wake up at five in the morning and, and evenings are bad. Evenings mm. are, are bad after like four o'clock. I'm really down for the count and then, yeah. and brain fog, brain fog is really a bad thing for me, you know, because it's hard for me to sometimes when I, certain words I want to say, and they don't come out the way I want them to searching for them. Um, so there's a lot of things. I have a very supportive husband um, and kids. Yay, to very supportive. He takes care of me. He takes care of things that I need before I know I need them. Oh, what a good person. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. But some of the symptoms are headaches, you know, are prominent in it as well. And I notice when I'm tired, I'll get a headache. Or if I wake up with the pressure, when it gets warm and cold, the see yeah. if I'm having trouble with the word, right? What is the pressure? The barometric yeah. pressure. Thank you. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. Um, when that changes, I used to be able to say that word, but when that changes, my my headache is gets really, really bad. But um, I just learned to live each day. I wake up. There was a time that I woke up blind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see some light and stuff like that, and that's where my faith came in. And what I did was, I had things strategically placed on my nightstand and I, I listened to music and yeah. it was, you know, it was around five o'clock. The doctor wasn't open. I'm not going to call in in middle of the night. And my husband had already left for work and I thought, okay, we'll just see how long this lasts. It lasts about three and a half hours. Wow. And it's amazing when one of your senses is gone, how the music sounded and how the memories came back. Cause yeah. I have a playlist that I play songs when I was in high school. Because um, all your other senses, when you lose one sense, all your other senses are heightened. Yes. In order to, like, you know, make sure that they take care of the sense that you don't have, you know. 
but it was i was told and and my doctor has told me that if it lasts more than 24 hours then it's a relapse or exacerbation mm -hmm. and and to call and that's when the medication starts but this was under 24 hours so yeah. they were aware of it i called them and talked to them and we kept an eye on it and i haven't had that problem since awesome awesome and you know one thing as you can see kind of the recurring theme is whenever you know, again, it's a stressful day. And Ms. Joan also talked about if she knows she has a day that she's going to be doing more, she essentially rests up the day before. And you see that pattern too, also just in her daily life that towards the end of the day, you know, she wakes up after, you know, as soon as she wakes up from her sleep the night before, she feels good, has more strength, but then as the day goes on and she's utilizing that strength, her body just becomes more fatigued um sooner than it would have before she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis so that's something you know also to remember and again as she talked about the relapsing you know that happens again if you have another stressful situation so let's say you're somebody uh you're a middle-aged female you become pregnant you have a history of ms the chances of you having an exacerbation is higher because again your body's going under a stressful event so, so that's so important to remember. And, you know, stress altogether isn't good for right. anybody. You know? <laughs> so exactly. It, it exactly. It causes a lot of things. Um, but here you can see how specifically it affects, you know, just even the nervous system with a diagnosis like MS. And well, the stress, an example was before my father had passed away, he was in a nursing home and senility had settled in. And when I would go see him, I would get so upset that I would have oh. the double vision and I would have the headaches. And and even some of, you know, IBS would happen or, mm -hmm. you know, just my, my, my stomach. It just, the stress was just unbearable at yeah. times. Oh, yeah. And for those of you, Ms. Joan mentioned IBS, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. And we know that a lot of times if people have anxiety and stress, you can kind of have that change in your bowel movement, whether it's going between diarrhea, constipation, you know, just that belly cramping, you can have um, all with stress. So do you have any family history of multiple sclerosis or any like neurological illnesses? Well, I'm adopted, okay. but my sister's really into genealogy. I found out that my grandparents on my mother's side um, has heart disease. Okay. So that kind of enlightened a little bit about my heart attack, but there's nothing that we can find with multiple sclerosis. Yeah. And I mean, we see this all the time in the medical field that sometimes, unfortunately, there is a spot, what we call a spontaneous case, you know, even though some things are genetic, like sometimes, of course, as you know, type one diabetes, a lot of times there's a family history um but sometimes it'll just be a spontaneous case where there's no family history and somebody has it and you know just speaking of risk factors um unfortunately you know we're in women's month but females are more susceptible to ms and middle age even though there isn't a discrimination as far as the age that it can start but the most common ages we see it in is middle age so like 20s to 30s so again it's and i mean miss joan is in her 50s and she said this started 30 10 years, years ago. ago so 46 years yeah 46 years old so no it started when you got diagnosed oh when i got yeah. diagnosed yeah you got, 10 yeah, years, she got so. diagnosed 10 years ago but your symptoms started 30 years ago so yes, she was in her yes. 20s i didn't even think at about that time that. yeah <laughs> she, i she didn't even think 20s, about that it's okay <laughs> she completely you know <laughs> fit the bill and um we know that you know we've seen more cases in caucasian females versus other races smoking has been shown that there's an increase there isn't necessarily like they haven't found like an exact link like oh my gosh if you smoke you're gonna have ms but there's just more cases in people who are smokers but not sure what the link is as far as the nervous system and we know miss joan used to smoke but after the heart attack she stopped cold turkey boom done 130 done. days or something since november 13th Ooh. yay Ooh. <laughs> and then of course if there's a family history like we talked about and sometimes it can be linked to if somebody had a viral infection before one of the 
Um, the viruses we've seen it occur more often after is mono. You know, everybody knows about mono or EBV, Epstein Barr. Mono is very popular in younger kids. We call it the kissing disease. Usually, you get it from kissing <laughs> other people or sharing utensils. Um, but there have been more cases that we see where somebody had a mono infection before. Not saying that it's a trigger. Not meaning that oh, if you have mono, you're going to get MS. But right. again, just kind of going part to that. I think there has to be a, a underlying susceptibility there and then just your body undergoing that stress where you kind of have that weak link opens that opportunity for MS to show its head. So, you know, now you do, so you do these treatments every six months, seems like you're yes. doing well and you're stable on it. You know, what, what do you feel that you've learned from your, this 10 years of having MS and how it's changed your outlook on life? Well, without sounding trite, um, I live each day like it's it's my last day. I may be, what I think in the back of my mind, and I'm being absolutely honest, is that I'm going to end up in a wheelchair. Mm. So I am grateful that each day that I'm up and able to move and walking around, we moved from a condominium to a house. So now everything's on one floor. I can do laundry again. Never thought I'd be excited about doing laundry. Aww. I am I'm ecstatic about it because there's four flights from the condo. We're on the second floor. Oh, so, um, but I've learned that um, just look at the good things. You know, this has brought out so much. You know, God didn't give me MS, but he has made good things That's out right. of this. The relationships that I've gotten with people. I got to meet you. I got to be yes. on the show. I mean, it has opened up so many doors for me. And and I like to be an advocate talking about because you have MS doesn't mean that your life is over. That's right. And and I and I love that. You know, just to piggyback on that, right now, you know, there's no cure for multiple sclerosis. However, again, we talked about the treatment options, some of the treatment that there's a lot of treatment options out there. What's great is they at least these treatments are used to help slow down the progression of MS and also help with any symptoms that somebody may be having because of the MS. So so yeah, so at least it doesn't mean, you know, I love how you put it because I feel a lot of us are guilty that if you get a diagnosis or something happens, you're like little Eeyore, poor me, and I can't right. do anything, and I can't, and then all of a sudden it's like game over, like all your dreams, you're just like, oh, I can never be that. But I love that you're you're like still going, you're pushing, you're persevering, you're doing even more that you were doing before. Exactly, um, I am. And, and remember, and I, the glass is it's not whether the glass is half empty or half full. You have you have a glass. Boom, Jonism. <laughs> That's a Jonism. <laughs> I love it. Um, yes, that be grateful that you have a glass. It doesn't matter if you're looking at it that it's half full or half empty. You have a glass. And I so, have one, so and important. I have a good one. Yes. And I mean, it is so important, especially now and for you ladies who are listening and make sure you share this with any women that, you know, again, as we celebrate uh, women this month that, you know, we realize how awesome we are. I know as women, we can be very hard on ourselves and just with how society has things that you have to look a certain way, your hair has to be a certain way, your like, whatever, your weight has to be a certain way, you know, and and people forget that, you know, in social media and magazines, on TV, people are like airbrush, Photoshop, you know, it's not the real deal. And I love it. There's an actress who I love so much and I gained so much. I loved her even before. I just like how she acts. And I gained so much more respect for her because she was on this talk show. This was like many, many years ago. And the host asked her, how do, how do you keep like so fit and how do you like stay looking young? And, and I love the answer she gave. She said, I get paid to do this. She said, yeah. if I have to do a movie and they expect me to have like a six pack, like I get paid to work out, you know, X amount of hours in order to get ready for that movie. And she said, you know, for all the women, for all the moms out there, 
you can't have an expectation of like this realistically. And I love that she said that. She wasn't right. like, oh yeah, I'm awesome. Boom, this is natural. She said, no, I get paid to do this. Like if I didn't get paid to do this, I would not look like this. I would not be doing half the things I do. And you know, majority of women don't get paid to like go exercise. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, you know, but of course, healthful habits, we all want to make them a part of our life. But my point being is as women, we just need to realize how awesome we are and not be so hard on ourselves. Because at the end of the day, if you know that you're doing your best, that that's all you can do. You can only do your best. But you really want to be able to look back and say and know that you've done your best. You don't want to look back and say, you know, I should have or I could have, but I didn't. Those are bad words. We don't exactly. say should have and could have. That's right. Yeah. So, and you know, it's okay for to make mistakes. It's okay if people say, say no, you know, that is what it is. It just, just move on. Just keep improving. Just keep pushing forward. So I feel Miss Joan, I just want to say that you're just so inspiring that, well, you know, thank you your heart attack, your MS, you know, I know you have so many stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Just, just life stories. I just love the fact that, you know, you haven't let any of those things, um, you know, come in your way of just growing and, and impacting other people. So I really just want to commend you on that. Well, thank you very much. I, I enjoy life. I really, really do. I really do. I love that. And we, and we all should because each day only comes once. Yes. Well, Just awesome. like, a, well, like in the creek, you know, with the water. You can only touch it once and it flows on. That's right. That's right. I love that. I love that. And you know, Jonism. it's Jonism. Boom. So you got your glass Jonism. You got the creek Jonism now. You guys got two today. If you're listening, you got two today. <laughs> um, but you know, and that's why I love pictures. I know my husband always gets me, he's like, oh my goodness, are you taking more pictures? But if you really think about pictures, pictures is a moment that you capture that you can never bring back. And that's why I love pictures so much, whether they're silly, serious, fun, whatever it is. I really just love pictures because they capture moments that we can never bring back. And and I feel life again is just the same way. Like Ms. Joan talked about the creek, that water, you can never like get that water back that passed. So each moment in your life, use it for something productive, for something good, because you know, does negativity really change what's happening? It doesn't, it just really makes the situation worse. So um, so finally, can you can you enlighten the audience? So if anybody's listening, you guys out there, if you know somebody who has MS or just needs needs encouragement, again, share um, the podcast, share the show. But what do you feel? Um, let's first hit with the MS. Are there things that you feel help you to feel better? You talked about getting rest and things like that. And then after you talk about that, I want you to hit on what are things that you feel you do on a daily basis to like keep you going where you're not like, Oh, you know, I have MS or I just had a heart attack, um, that push you through. Okay. Um, well, the first question is what I do like in the summertime is really hard for me. I'm heat sensitive. Now if I'm by water, I'm fine. You yeah. know, put me in a pool, put me, I live at, at, at a lake and, and put me in the water. I'm, I'm fine. But there are cooling, wraps I put around my neck and, and on top of my head for a hat and stuff like that. What keeps me going is my devotionals. Mm. Um, I do a devotional every morning and it is hard. There are times where I may not hit right at a certain time that I like to do it every day, but um, I do daily devotionals and, and I do Wednesday devotionals with groups of people. And um, I, that's what keeps me going. That's and what I keeps going and i love it just to hit on the ms yes if you have ms um you know make sure you're getting enough rest make sure you're staying hydrated because that's so so important um yes but you guys know here 
Um, we are faith driven and believers. And I totally agree, you know, waking up and making sure that the first thing you do is thank God for the, that heartbeat that you have, that breath of life that you have, but also just helping you through the day and to, to, to right. direct your path and give you strength. Because listen, there's so much stuff happening in the world. As we all know, there's always something out there to be a distraction. There's always going to be something out there that can bring us down but we all know who is in control and we all know that god again does have a perfect plan for our lives so i love love that because my thing is i make it because every day i have a prayer i always make sure i pray and my planner those are like the two things yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm starting to get a planner i'm starting to get a planner which is cool Thanks for you being on the show twice. I need to put it in my planner. I know it. You need a schedule. You need a schedule. Well, I love it. And um, as you guys know, scrolling at the bottom, um, if you guys want to connect with Miss Joan, please, please do so. Please um, do. Any questions you have, I mean, I have 10 years under my belt. And and <laughs> and I'll be more than happy to help you. And just, just talking to her as a person, she's a great person just to talk to other than, you know, I was talking about um, her experiences and the things that she's gone through. But you can connect with her, one, if, one, you've had a heart attack and you just kind of want to talk to somebody who's been through the same situation. If you have MS, you know somebody who may have MS and trying to look some look for somebody to support them but you can check her out on facebook connect with her it's just her name joan Baumgarth. also her facebook page for coaching queens 2020 or you can email her at road scholar that's r-o-a-d-s-c-h-o-l-a-r-2006 at gmail.com so you can shoot her an email if you have any questions if you want to connect with her as she mentioned she is also a speaker which i love she's getting out there sharing her story impacting people changing people's lives and i love it i love the fact that she's Thank gone you. through you guys know that that she's gone through her trials going through her trials but she's taking her situation and using it to help others through theirs. So make sure you connect with her. Um, thank you so much. Again, oh, thank you. It's, <laughs> it's such a pleasure. We always have fun talking. Yeah, that's a blast. I loved it. <laughs> and of course, thank you all for listening today or tuning in if you're watching the video. Um, Ms. Jones' information will be in the show notes if you want to get to that. Of course, don't forget to follow the Dr. Mom Show, whether that's on YouTube, um, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or Spotify. If you want to join my female Facebook group, that's Fulfilled Females, that you can hop in every week. I just do a weekly health challenge just to keep things going. Again, it's just a group of supportive women. Again, we're just trying to help each other here, right? We're just right. trying to help each other because empowered women empower women. We don't compete. We collaborate. We help each other. There is enough space and there is enough room for everybody. So remember that there is enough space for everybody and we are stronger together. So definitely check that out. Don't forget to check out um, my website, Dr. Deline Mushalak, D-R-D-E-L-E-N-E, Mushalak, M-U-S-I-E-L-A-K.com for some freebies. And of course, if you would like to tell your story and turn your vision into legacy, uh, we would love to be a part of publishing your book. So you can always check out Alea Publishing LLC.com. And of course, as always, don't forget you are beautiful, you are strong, you are amazing, and you can do anything you put your mind to because you are a superhero. Have faith over fear, and God bless. Thank you again, Miss Joan, for being on. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And of course, you guys from Dr. D, Mom of Three, don't forget to wash your hands, kiss your kids, love your families, and say your prayers. Good night. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.